Hello YouTube, we are here at Mabu Studios, the home of Real Fish Talk with Corey and Jimmy. And it's been a while since I've been down here, so we're gonna take a quick tour of all of his fish tanks. Woo! All right, so just a quick overview so you can see how it's laid out. We have 425 gallon tanks here. And then over here, I believe there's four of these 29 gallons. Yep. And then two 55s? Yep, or no, uh, 75s. Oh, two 75s, oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess they are a little deeper. All right, so we are at the first 125, which has Ladybird. Yep, Mabu Puffer. Haven't been packing on the size yet because I haven't put a bigger tank up to where she's gonna go. She just lives with some of these platies and eats clams mostly. Something these like are that. just the Hikari Frozen clams, or? Yeah, these ones are Ocean Nutrition, but yeah, okay. same difference. And she's a lot shyer when it comes to eat, so you have to wait a little bit. That's how mine is too. Yeah, when they get bigger, they get a lot more outgoing. And I think at the store, Murphy's more used to it, but definitely you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty quiet in here, but very slow. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. So even at that little size, I still have a crazy amount of power, which obviously you know. So let me ask you, how often, I know that I know uh, Murphy in the store gets fed all the time because people mm -hmm. want to feed him. Yeah. How often do you feed uh, Ladybird? I would say if we're being truthful, probably every other day, but there'll be weeks where it's every day and then there'll be times when it's like, oh, we're out of town, so we just won't feed for three days. You know, they're being a predator, they don't have to eat every day and they can kind of binge eat and then live off that weight um, and that food they get. So, you know, that's the thing is if I, if I had a bigger tank ready to go, I would start growing her out more. I would feed her more often and that type of thing. And because we don't feed that much, that's why the platies aren't really uh, making a bunch more yet. They're just kind of in there to clean up after. And technically they're very atis because I know the internet goes nuts when I call them a platy, but they're very atis. Sunset very atis. I kind of did that with mine too at the start. I didn't feed very much because I didn't want her, mm -hmm. him to grow too fast. Him or her, who knows. Yeah. Uh, do you think that will stunt their growth when you do start to feed them? I think it could stunt them a little bit, but in my opinion, I kind of want that. So if I end up with a, a 22 inch puffer instead of a 32 inch puffer, that's probably a better situation for me to be in, you know? And, but I will say I've done this before and they will grow, I, you grow like a weed. If you really put the water changes in the food to them after, you know, you're like intentionally trying not to grow them. It's not that I'm not like, She's obviously growing, but it's not so that like, she's not growing at all and I'm starving. It's just, I don't, I could have her probably twice as big at this point and then I'd be going, oh geez, and by the end of summer, I really gotta get that tank set up and I plan to have it set up anyway, but I'd rather not be racing against, you know, like a, an ammonia spike or something like that. I only love these fish. Yeah, they're, I, I can't say they're my absolute favorite, but you know, I've got one at home and one at the shop and they're both crazy expensive pets and what I would tell people is think of it like a dog, but imagine one dog has to only live at work and you'd be like, well, I'd want a dog at home too. And that's how I feel, so. All right, what do we got going on down here? Down low is my blood parrot grow out tank. It, it's actually, when I tore down the fish room, a bunch of stuff had to go into here. So there's like a hundred costumes in there probably. <laughs> and there's super reds also, um, besides the albinos, some I bred. Uh, there's even some dwarf pleco's in there. We've got some corys. And then these blood parrots that, they came in, I was gonna keep them in a smaller tank, and then I've, I've kind of just fallen in love with them because they're big and colorful, and I just brought some new smaller ones home to kind of make this group bigger, and they might go in the 800 gallon with a bunch of like rainbow fish and stuff. Um, but having them down here, I've just gotten more and more to like them. So I've got an auto feeder in here going, because uh, I can feed some dry food. And then the salad shrimp, I like to feed that for the plecos and the meaty stuff. You know, that really wants to rasp on stuff, so we'll put some of that in there. We'll put wafers and that kind of stuff too. But there is so many fish in here, if I don't put some high, high protein stuff in there, it's a problem. And then we usually feed frozen blood worms and, you know, pellets, but being the wrong camera, I'm just putting some stuff in. So when you're feeding the shrimp, do you get the frozen cooked or frozen uncooked? I get the cooked. And I myself don't find there would really be any difference and you could soak them in vitamins and that thing and that type of stuff but i i'm looking for ease you know when you're feeding a lot of tanks and uh i actually haven't seen scientific studies that show how much nutrition is lost like i i do realize some nutrition is lost but 
at the same time, like if we're comparing this shrimp to a dry food, I think this is going to have a lot of nutrients in it uh, compared to a dry food that's already been cooked and done, you know, most of our foods have been, you know, freeze dried or slow baked, that type of thing. And I firmly believe it's the variety that's the important part, you know, so, you know, let's say these are Snickers candy bars. Well, it's like, well, there's blood worms, there's plus, there's all these things going in there. This is just a, a big protein source that is relatively cheap and is easy to feed out and it's in the correct size, I'm gonna have to sit here and cut it up. And a lot of people will say like, you should just cut it up and do that. It's like, well, but if I'm feeding 20 tanks at a time, that's a lot of prep. And being that we film so much and we're traveling, or like I just tell my wife like, yeah, put like one or two shrimp in each tank and some of this dry food, that's way more manageable than, you know, one fourth of a large prawn. You know, it's, it's asking a lot more of my wife. Yeah, I could technically pre-cut it all up and hopefully it wouldn't freeze together in just a giant ball. Um, but it makes it really easy and you can see the pleckers are starting to rasp on it and um, You know, so it's just, I find it to be a good source of protein that we use it in the store too um, Especially underweight fish. It really works well We're doing that. I have them for my uh, Mabu puffer, but mm -hmm. I've never even thought about feeding them to other tanks Yeah, and you'd be surprised some of the fish that really chow down on it You go like you can watch 150 guppies all work on one piece of shrimp for you know the next two hours and then their bellies are all full and that type of thing and and snails too like especially assassin snails and even just some and trumpets all that stuff it's just great protein source for a lot of things and we have the turtles down here yep these are the mini musk turtles that i've been breeding and kind of the colony's getting bigger there's smaller ones there's adults um got the food ready so this food here is basically freeze-dried um, fish and shrimp and that kind of stuff so it's literally sardines and all that kind of stuff and you can just kind of sprinkle that in there and we've got the UV light and they can get up on the docks and do everything they want to do and even here so same thing I, I put some shrimp in um, just as a variety and you'll watch them kind of fight over that so all of these uh, red well I was gonna I gotta think what to call them uh, technically these are uh, sword tails, but I bought them as teacup platies and uh, You know I kind of let the seller on eBay have it because they clearly are all sword tails <laughs> You know and it's irritating that they would do that, but you know, there's not a lot I can do about it There's also a uh, heterander formosa in there. So the dwarf lie bear. Oh, I thought that was were fried, but those are definitely yeah formosa I used to keep these two. I never had good luck with them. Like I mean I didn't kill them, but they didn't really breed that much for me. Well, they were just kind of in the fish room, and again, when we condensed, they had to go somewhere. I was like, sweet, they'll probably have a colony, and, uh, you know, the turtles are from Florida, and the, um, these killifish are from Florida. Look at that giant one and the baby one. The baby, like, needs to take a bite off of that, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, they, you know, they'll fight over food and grab stuff, and we use pellets and that kind of stuff, too, and there's a canister filter at the end, so it kind of does this flow motion, and... All the tanks here auto water change, um, which is obviously super helpful when I'm traveling a bunch. And uh, yeah, I'm yeah. sure uh, everyone's jealous. Yeah, it, it took a lot of work, but oh, now we got three of them two babies and an adult that wants that one. It looks like that turtle's yelling at him. <laughs> Meanwhile, right. there's some laying around. Yeah, they could just go <laughs> grab a different one, but you know, that's they will, um, like, adults and babies will latch onto each other's limbs and not let go sometimes so they can be a little bit you know rubble rousey between each other but um surprisingly uh this tank doesn't grow much algae i know we change a lot of water but i thought for sure we'd grow a lot more algae like on the glass and stuff but it works out really well they won't let me have any plants because they'll just chow it down so are you still breeding these uh yeah so We've got eggs over on the other side that we pull because I'll lay them, lay them in here. I need to build the above water uh, lay box and I just, it's on the, the reason I haven't built it is because I want to make a video about it and that takes all day. Building the box itself probably take me 45 minutes but I want to make a video so everyone can do it and that's causing me to not get it done. So. Yeah, I don't know how that goes. People are going to be angry at me because I just moved in. 225 gallon tanks I didn't film any of it because <laughs> yeah, I just well wanted to get it done. Yeah exactly so you get it done and it's super quick and you can get a lot done in a weekend but if you uh, you can see one of the super babies right on top of that piece of wood there it blends in with the with it's got algae on its shell. <laughs> yeah. He lives up there so much. Yeah that little baby. 
Um, that's one of the ones that hatched out probably last month or so. And uh, so yeah, eventually I've you know I've got a giant herd of these. The 125 is going to last them quite a while, but um, you know maybe I got to do some giant paludarium or something in the future. I don't know yet. But so far, just making more and enjoying them. You know they're kind of always dirtling around being turtles. So everyone loves turtles, and everyone goes, "Oh my God, they're so cute!" You know, and that's that doesn't get old. So. Oh my god, they're so cute! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and now we gotta have uh, Jimmy talk about his tank. Yeah, this is Jimmy's tank. Uh, Front and center, Jimmy. Uh, all right. Now you gotta do something. Welcome to my 125 rainbow fish tank. Got the herbal axe rise, kamakas. Got these orange fin hill trouts that are just a pain in the butt for them. But they keep them in line, which is really fun. Um, got some Corridora Davinsai. Davinsai? Yeah. Uh, from Jerry Yost uh, over there in Missouri, one of the largest koi gourd breeders ever. Uh, there's a guard loop in here that helps clean. There's also a Siamese alligator. You can see a wood cat right there in the bottom. Oh, you got wood cats too? Yeah, he's so derpy. The other wood cat's behind <laughs> the sponge filter. I found all three of them. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was a pain. And uh, there's 397s or 497s. Uh, 397. Yeah, 397. You got 497s over there. 494s, I think. 494s. Okay, yeah. yeah. So 397s <laughs> in here. Yeah, which, there was just one out, but yeah, I don't see they're it. probably they're probably gone. But yeah, um, very easy tank to take care of. Ever since I got sat these algae eaters, because they just do all the work. Um, you got a really nice color here. Yeah, <laughs> well, the monster light. <laughs> and uh, I dose iron. I dose Easy Green every day. What's that? Uh, easy Green. Easy, easy Green. green? Oh, yes. <laughs> and you still dose... got to get a free T-shirt. Yeah, so if you use the code uh, shirt promo, if you buy a shirt, you get a free bottle of Easy Green to go with it. Yeah. We'll have the links down below for you guys. And I dose Easy Carbon. But yeah, let's move on to the next tank. All right, so what do we got next over here? This is my black water tank. So it means we've got a lot of tans in the water. We've got strawberry bettas or betta alba marginata and a bunch of crips. Um, I don't dose this tank or anything like that. There's a big Apontiquit nulvaceus here that's flowering. And we've got a few floating caves and you've got the the boy right there and with these guys they're mouth brooders so the boys will actually hold the babies and there's another one way up in this corner might be holding but it's so dark um, and these guys they're just fun to feed Daphne and so we've got Daphne going on outside and I'm gonna pour some in and uh, we'll watch them stock them because that's what they like to do so so now we've got all this live food in there And it's just fun to watch all the different sizes and their little reservoir uh, heads are going nuts and you know you can't really overfeed with live food which is a good thing it's got the intake sponge kind of keeping them from getting sucked up I mean they can get sucked up a little bit but uh, they'll hunt and eat and gorge themselves and the goal is what I used to do in the past is I would just I was a better aquarist and I would hatch out live baby Brian every single day and then they'd spit the babies out and they would just raise up with the parents and I think that one in the corner is holding because he's not eating at all. But being that I don't, being that I travel every other week essentially, there's not enough live food going in, so I haven't noticed any babies yet. But you know, I, it's always one of those. I will. I'm gonna hammer down and make some of these because I really like this fish. Yeah, that's the. I don't know that I've ever seen that bit of before. Yeah, they're fun, and they're they can be kind of expensive, like thirty bucks a piece when they're wild caught. But once they get cranking. When we were cranking them out and selling them at the store, we just sold them at 10 bucks because we had more than we could really sell. There's like tons would keep coming in because we'd breed them. And uh, so they're definitely worth it at 10 bucks. At 30 bucks, it's a $60 commitment for a pair. And I recommend a trio. So two boys and a girl, since the boys are holding, they can take turns. Like you see this boy in the back eating a bunch. The other one's not eating at all because he's holding. And the female will just keep breeding with both of them. So. And, and the males have all the color, so it's kind of nice you get to have more of the ones that have all the color and you just have to keep one drab female. Yeah, it's just fun. It's something different I want to show people. Like, this is a black water tank. And you, it would be a lot darker, but it auto water changes also. So that's why it's not as dark. And, uh... Well, it's already hard enough to film being this dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right, let's go to the one right to the right here, because I really like this tank. This is kind of a mix. So Jimmy escaped it. I was out of town, he's like... We brought this rock home, right? Because we knew it was a really cool piece of service stone. He's like, can I, can I escape this tank? We're not doing anything with it. 
You know? Ask them every day. Yeah, and I was like, all right, because I kind of wanted to escape with this rock because it's super cool, and now he gets to take the credit. Um, and there's some Crips and Anubias in here. Also, it's all pretty much low light, uh, easy maintenance stuff because we don't want to have to trim all the time. He added the gobies in there because Jimmy's a goby freak. Did you put two pairs or three total? There's two pairs. In there. Okay, yeah. So, and then there's what kind of goby? Rainbow ornate. Rainbow ornate gobies. Yeah, they. Uh, so they're super fun. And then we've got the best guppies in the world. These are the fry that I've been growing out. And there's you know a larger female somewhere in here. And down. yeah, down here. And then I've you know it's a hodgepodge. So there's like cherry shrimp in there. There's also these platies, not swordtails. These are actually platies. The problem is when we rebuilt the fish room, I lost like two of them, and they were all small fry. I lost two, and what have grown out is just two females. So I need to try and get another one from Sergeant Tanks. That's a male, so I could breed those because I think they're super cool. Now I know people are going to ask me. This is uh, octopus, pogo stemum, stellatus octopus. Yep, exactly. Yeah, we sell it on the website, and it's a real fast grower. Uh, and it's not too demanding. Like we've got re reasonably low light in here. I mean, it's not low light, but it's not high light by any means. And so most people can have success with like all the plants in this tank. All right, so let's head down below here. So this was me being bored uh, and wanting to order fish because I hadn't ordered, like I, I ordered fish from the wholesalers, right? I don't know how that goes. And I was like, I haven't ordered fish off of, of like Aquabid or eBay or anything like that in a long, long time. And so the same day I ordered those sword tails that are in the turtle tank that aren't teacup platies because okay. I ended up getting rid of those when I redid the fish room. And then I saw these blue platies and you know, some of them like, well, let's take that guy out because he's got a little bit of orange on him. But the goal is to get them to be really nice blue and I want to start breeding them. I'm thinking about putting these in my living room tank. And so for now it's kind of a uh, Jimmy brings home some of the plants that get allergy covered. Yeah, and then they like were dying. Swords, yep. They were gonna throw them away, so I was like, oh, let me take them home and try to regrow. All yep. So he's gonna play with those, and uh, looks like we got another tank that needs to be aquascaped. Yeah. Well, that's the thing <laughs> is, all of these are supposed to be aquascaped. And we're supposed to do it, but it's a whole day of filming, and you know, like this week we've had someone come over every day like this, and it's like, oh, we could have we could have done that today, but like, well, now we got someone coming over, we'll just do it, and uh, so yeah, it is the plan to scape them all. We kind of want to do some scapes where. Like let's say we do wood and then it goes into the next tank and that kind of stuff. And so right now Jimmy just gets, it's like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to bring it home. He just keeps sticking stuff in. And then people are like, did you aquascape that? I'm like, no, that's kind of some yeah. stuff we threw in there, which you is, know, which yeah. is like this next tank over here. This tank is literally that. It's not <laughs> remotely set up. There's just some plants. These are all plants from the fish room. We kept just throwing stuff in here. There's Wolbitis. There's uh, Anubias, some moss balls we use for like a real fish talk. And then I've got these like coral platies I got from Goliad Farms. And then I've got the black uh, neo shrimp from the, the Flip Aquatics breeding contest. And you can see they're on the wood. And yeah, they're really populating in there now. So it's, you know, auto water change on here too. And, uh, you know, but we do want to set up with something. But I want to, like, with the black water tank, I want to show people the black water tank. Same thing. It's like I want to show something, not just like, look, there's another tank that we have. Because it looks okay now. Like, doesn't look amazing, but it's perfectly healthy oh, for everything. It's pretty sweet to me. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. I mean, I'll, I guess I'll throw them some. You know what? Right you know what you're missing so far. I haven't seen any epistos. It's true. I don't think we have any epistos That's right now. This would be an awesome for a breeding pair. It would. Yeah, for sure. Mostly, I I'm not breeding any epistos because I don't want to hatch out baby Brian every day. Like I once I commit to that, a fish room does so much better once baby Brian is always hitting tanks. It does so good. All right, so we're back on the, uh, this is the top 75 gallon. Yep. This one here has the 494s. I got these um, at the catfish convention I was at last September. So again, another convention and uh, not too common here in the United States. And they look super cool. I'm hoping to breed them because they're not supposed to be too hard to breed. And I'm going to put some shrimp in there to see if we can get them to come out. That doesn't mean they will come out because they're not the... Uh, the most outgoing but got lots of caves in here and they like to hide out in the coconut huts and that type of thing and again we're gonna do a whole scape and that type of thing in here but you know for now we're just giving a minimal like hey you're gonna be happy here and uh, we might even like go down to the next tank and then like be able to look back and go sweet now they're eating we can totally see them oh, here he comes yeah they smell the food again it's that you know it's not always cocktail shrimp 
and we do blood worms and other meaty stuff. Not a lot of pellets in here because we don't really have too many snails or anything like that. You know, so you, you kind of want something that will clean up after them. Because they don't oh, need it all. Here. Yeah, they're all moving because they're going, oh, I know the food's here, but they're like, there's light on too. Yeah, they're really finicky, like, yeah. like discus or something. Mm hmm. You almost have to uh, sit back away to see it. Oh, there's one behind the, yeah, the heater where you start seeing its color. We run some, the uh, in here. Maybe dither fish in here. Yeah, so that, that is part of the plan is like, rescape, put some fish to go with it. Originally, I had the German Berlin buttercups, but it, the male um, ratio was so high that it didn't work out. And I'm not sure what I want to put with. I kind of just want to put like a school of cardinal tetras or something. I think it would just look good, you know, swimming back and forth. And so just got to pull the trigger on some stuff. And I can bring tons of stuff home, but I'm in this constant cycle of, yeah, should we bring home like 100 cardinal tetras, Jimmy? We leave in four days, <laughs> you know? And then it's yeah, like, then something goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like, uh, you know, ah, oh, is that really what I want to do? And so I'm perpetually in that state, unfortunately. But yeah, they're starting to develop their, what is it? I think they call it the uh, don toads. Like yeah. the, all the hairs and stuff on the tail. And so we'll be able to start sexing them. And we've got the, the bigger ones we got originally. Then we got a group of uh, five of smaller ones. So that you see a little bit smaller ones in there. So we have a group of eight in here. So it should be enough to get a group going. Um, but it's just time. Feed them and take time. All right, so what do we got going on down below? Down low, we've got... Uh, puffer fish. Let me grab some clams again. As you can see, there's, they eat lots of clams. Yeah, when I first walked in here, I was like, oh, he's got shell dwellers, but no, these are clams. Yeah, not shells. so in here, another 75 gallon. Let me throw some food in for these guys so we can watch them. I'll pull the light forward for you. Oop. There we go. So these are Shodeni puffers. I want to try and breed them long term. There's definitely like tank bosses and not like the skinnier ones don't eat as much um and from what i learned when i was in germany there's a guy that was breeding them they got to get like another inch before you can really start sexing them and attempting to breed them or at least that's when you're going to have good viable clutches and they're one of the communal puffers which is nice and so we're keeping with all these leopard frog plecos and there's probably like eight or so we actually had um, a disaster in here while i was gone i don't remember where i was but we came back basically and the, the plecos were acting weird and we didn't really know why and it turns out behind this giant piece of wood we had the intake for the hang on back well we never installed an intake sponge and it got caught up with a leaf and it basically choked the tank off wow and so you know it was like one of those things like i know i always run sponge intakes but we'd run out um, because we were selling them online and i never got around to putting one on here and so i ended up losing about three leopard frogs we didn't lose any of the any of the uh Spotted Congos are the Shodenai puffers, which is good, but you know I learned a lesson of like, oh, this is why I always recommend it because even I've suffered the wrath from it, and uh, you know it adds beneficial bacteria and all that kind of stuff as well. I wonder there's there's probably another one lurking, watching these fools, and it like zooms right in. Because right now there's only four right in the front, but I kind of want to add some more. Um, so I, I, do they call any breed? No, they don't call any breed, um, but like the, the guy that was breeding them, his, his best advice is keep them in a big colony so that they don't um, just like kill each other, mm. you know? Because uh, like they're, you can see them kind of posturing and chasing each other a bit and doing that kind of stuff. And definitely when they're fighting over territory, it's a little bit worse. Put some worms in here as well. Um, but yeah, he recommends a big group and then uh, just remove the, uh, remove the eggs after they breed. So you can see like that one that's skinnier, he's going to come over and eat worms because he is low, you know, low puffer on the totem pole over on the other end. And there's that fifth one coming out from the end now. So another one that's kind of low on the totem pole. You know, so adding the worms are going to spread around much more. He's going to go, okay, I'll get some of these worms, let these big fatties over here keep eating on those clams. And uh, I've never seen him really bite against the clam or anything like that, but the German uh, breeder said he doesn't have any problems at all with their teeth. Okay. So it's kind of like a non-issue. Like, I don't want to officially say that because I haven't necessarily observed that for a long enough period of time. But I trust that guy. He's bred 27 different species of puffers. Probably knows what he's talking about. That's insane. You know, and he had babies there, and so it's like clearly this guy's been playing with these a bit. So how and big are their clutches? 
Uh, well, he says they're pretty big, but he gets lots and lots of fungus. The pH's got to be at 5.5. He's got to get the eggs out because they'll eat them. And then uh, has to have methylene blue so they don't fungus up as much. And then the clutches are actually pretty big, but it's so difficult to raise the fry. Like you have to use specific micron levels of infusoria. So it's like you got to step them up in different levels of infusoria. So it's like difficult step after difficult step, like crazy low pH, got to collect eggs, got to keep them from fungusing. Then you got to start working them up ridiculously small foods. Like they have to be over a month old before they can even start to take live baby brine and that kind of stuff. So wow. there's a lot of work that's going into that. Um, and it's hard to even, you know, get beneficial bacteria going at only a 5.5 pH. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a labor of love, but it's super cool that he had a bunch of babies and all that kind of stuff going on. And All right, there you have it. All the tanks in the Mabu Studios. I hope you enjoyed the video. I want to thank Corey, who is coming oh, wow. here, yes. and also Jimmy for showing his tank. It was a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun. Check out both their channels are popping up right here. And right here, check out the website for the free t-shirt, free Easy Green. What is it, you buy a t-shirt, you get free Easy Green? Yeah, shirt promo <laughs> is the code. All right, guys. I hope you had fun, like I said, and I'll see everyone next time. I'll be good for you. Well, wait, we could do that. We could do the, the three. We could do the three. Like, you, you have to go to the right, I'll go to the left. All right, and wait for your cue. Like, I'll say your name.